The Kumulipo is a creation story that is significant to Native Hawaiian peoples. In the very beginnings of this creation story, we talk about how the earth was hot and molten and how the sky was uh, thunderous and was rolling and roaring and how that created, if you will, this big boom and created life. And we recognize the first biological ancestor as the coral polyp. And this makes sense for ancient peoples because they saw it as a foundation for their physical island, the coral reef. In native Hawaiian tradition, nature and culture are one. That understanding shapes one of the world's largest conservation zones, the Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument. Located in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, this vast marine protected area was created by a coalition of many voices, native Hawaiians, conservationists, and the support of the Bush and Obama administrations. As a native Hawaiian and a marine scientist, I think I can see so many different ways in which Papahanao Mokuakea is a very special and unique place. And culturally, there's almost no place like it in the Hawaiian Islands. It's one of the most sacred places in our archipelago. Biologically, it's one of the last really great wild places left on Earth. It, so it ranks up there with the African Serengeti and the Brazilian rainforest. I've been on probably 25 research expeditions, and believe it or not, every one that I go on is the best one I've ever been on. Like national parks on land, marine sanctuaries and monuments are tools to sustain biodiversity. The best of science tells us and confirms what most fourth graders know, right? Like you keep nature intact, it's gonna be the most resilient. That resilience is more necessary than ever. Right now, coral reefs around the world are being threatened by human actions. Rising sea temperatures are triggering coral bleaching. Changing ocean chemistry is making it harder for coral to grow. And plastics are getting into the marine food chain. But all of us need a healthy ocean to regulate climate, provide oxygen, and supply food. People don't realize that the livability of this planet is actually directly dependent on the livability of the ocean. If we want to deal with climate, we have to take better care of our ocean. We're going to have to protect as much as we can, as quickly as we can. Yet protecting nature doesn't always mean keeping people out. In my 20 plus years in conservation, I've seen a real shift where first it was, you know, people bad. Look at what we're doing. Let's protect species. And then we looked at species separately. And then we said, oh wait, species need habitat. They need to roam around. So let's protect the roam around. But people, still bad. And now I'm so happy that we've moved to a very old idea that people are part of nature. And actually in order to make sure that we care for nature, we have to put ourselves back in. Mahala, 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 nui. To reinforce that fundamental connection between nature and culture, the next generation is writing new songs. In the song written for Papahana Mokuakea, we acknowledge our genealogy as well. We descend from the coral, and so we should treat the coral as if it is our ancestor. I think one of the most important lessons that could come out of Papahana Mokuakea kind of combines culture and nature and science. We care for the ocean and then the ocean in turn cares for us. So it's a two-way street and it shouldn't only apply to Papahanaumokuakea. This should apply to human activities across all cultures and across all oceans. The challenges we're facing on this planet are big. And it's really hard as individuals to think that anything I do can make a difference. Every place is amazing. It may be covered with buildings, it may have all sorts of turmoil, but the planet, wherever you live, is actually amazing. And so it's really, how do we find the awesome every place that we live and try to make it a little bit more awesome in whatever way makes sense for you.